Hey guys, how's it going? Edit here again. In today's video, we are going to be doing a review on the Retro Stone and an unboxing. So this was something that was made and sent to me very kindly um, by a person who also made another device which was like an SNES controller about this big which had a little screen on it um, and uh, that was kickstarted. This thing was also kickstarted and it made a lot of money, very very popular. High quality uh, emulators, you know handhelds always do very very well because that's what people want. So here it is, here's the retro stone. You can kind of see that they've got, they're going for this chiseled stone type vibe. Um, on the back it has all these specifications, so you can play it on your TV, you can also play multiplayer, you can turn it into a PC, that's right this thing is also running off of um, Raspberry Pi of course, you have a brief um, diagram of what the kind of stuff is, the layout of everything and some of the specifications, so a lot of you will probably be interesting to read that, it's quite cool there. Um, up here it says RetroStone is a single board computer with a case and all necessary necessary peripherals to make a game console. Please note that it comes with no operating system nor games. Operating systems for H3 processor can be found online, Specific, especially some awesome emulation station. Operating system should be installed by the user on the memory card. Instructions to do so can be found at there. So I'm gonna to have to do that um, because obviously I haven't opened this yet. So it looks great. Let's um, just crack into the box then and see what it's all about. I'm really excited to see if it's going to be any good. Um, so here is the operations manual, a nice well designed booklet. And here it is, oh my goodness. First impressions, it looks terrific. Absolutely terrific. Feels great. Wow. The buttons feel incredible. That screen is huge. Let's see if it has any um, power on. There we go. Ooh. God, hopefully the screen's not broken, that looks a bit dodgy. We'll have to uh, test that in a bit. So we've got the HDMI port on the outside. I believe these are different um, buttons to operate the device. And there's another button up there, we'll have to work out what all of these are. There's a wheel on the side. Oh no, that's the micro SD card slot, which it looks like it actually comes with one. That's very, very nice. It comes with a 16 gigabyte memory card, so that's very, very nice they've included that. A headphone jack on the bottom, a lot of people um, complain when a headphone jack is missing. Obviously it also has what looks like a mono speaker with a volume wheel on the bottom as well. And you've pretty much just got your standard layout. It also has um, two buttons on the back for PS1 and SNES games, which is also very, very nice. You've got start and select at the bottom, which feel very, very original. The D-pad has been redesigned to be a bit more girthy, but I really, really like that. Nice big buttons. You've got some LED indicators down there. You've got four USB ports and Ethernet, and that is pretty much a lot. Obviously no battery slot. This is gonna be running off of some sort of a rechargeable battery. It's not a 3D printed case. Well, at least it doesn't feel like that, and it certainly doesn't look like it. It's a smooth, well-finished, polished up plastic. It feels just unbelievable. Let's go ahead and take the screen protector off. Everybody enjoys that. And there's the beautiful screen, which is probably gonna get infested with dust shortly. Right, so what I'm gonna do is put some um, software and emulators on here, and we'll just get going and see what it's like. Okay, so I've been using this thing for about a week now. I wanted to give this thing a fair review. I don't know a lot about Raspberry Pis, so I thought if I um, kind of did a little bit of just user testing, then I'd be able to give you a full review of it. Uh, and that is what I'm gonna do now. In terms of build quality and feel, it is probably one of the highest quality reproduction um, devices I've ever, ever felt. Um, it almost feels like better quality than the Game Boy, uh, which is kind of hard to imagine because the Game Boy is kind of the, the precedent um, for high quality. All Nintendo products really are. But um, the plastic they've used is incredible. The button membranes they've used feel so authentic. It feels like a really, really um, real kind of device. Um, the start and select feel great. All the buttons work absolutely great. Um, the downsides. So, as I said, I don't know a lot about Raspberry Pi, but one of the things I have struggled with massively is the software side of it. Um, one of those things being turning it on. 
Um, it seems to be really, really temperamental when it wants to work and when it doesn't want to work. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that I've done wrong. Um, my friend Sean did actually tell me that if you don't shut the device down properly, it can have quite a lot of um, you know, problems when you turn it on in the future, which I think might actually be one of my issues. Um, so this is why it's difficult for me to give a complete honest review on this because I'm not exactly its target end user. Um, the other thing, we'll come back to that in a minute though, the other thing that I've kind of struggled with a little bit as well is actually getting the games onto this thing. It doesn't seem like the easiest thing to do. Um, you have to kind of connect like a memory to it and then you have to access like a desktop mode which kind of runs like a Linux and, uh, and then from there you can then drag the files in. But it sounds simple but it's really, really not as simple as, um, as it sounds. It probably is for people who really know what they're doing um, but I'm just not one of those people. Um, as you can see, it's already frozen. So then you come into the difficulty of, do you turn it off? Do you, do you leave it to, to see if it's gonna do anything? Um, if you turn it off, you can damage the SD card and then you can you know screw up the, uh, the file system and stuff. Um, and then you're back to square one again. But I guess that's the only thing we can do really. Um, this seems to be like a reset button. This is for the, um, the screen, so you can change the brightness and the contrast on the screen. Uh, the screen quality as well, God, I'm really quick firing these things. The screen quality as well isn't great. It seems like something that they've got from a um, reversal, car reversal monitor. So it's very similar to um, what we see people using in their own Pi builds, like their custom Pi builds, um, which isn't necessarily a down, neg ne like a negative thing, um, because a lot of the games that you're gonna be playing anyway aren't gonna be like super, super high quality, but small text is difficult to read. Um, so that's another thing you should just keep in mind. Uh, but once you actually get the games going, this thing is just, it just exceeds everything. It is just better than pretty much any device um, that I've seen a company making, um, like aftermarket device. You can kind of see that text. You might be able to see um, if I just turn off the autofocus. You can kind of see it's not ideal. At the bottom there, it's quite difficult to read. But here we go. Now that we're in, you know, if this, if it could just work like this every single time, um, then it would be... Brilliant. I'm sure it probably does, you know, but um, I'm just not exactly super clued up on it. Um, so let's go ahead and press Nintendo 64. We'll have a look at Legend of Zelda. So Ocarina of Time is going to be slightly difficult to play because you don't have the C stick and stuff, but um, just show you proof of proof of concept and the fact that it actually does run perfectly fine. You could even plug in a USB um, controller into here if you wanted to. It's also got HDMI out, so there's a lot of options um, If even if you can't play um, a portable N64 um, version, you know, you can always plug it in afterwards. So here we go, go ahead and there's Retro DX, John's Facebook page. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it is brilliant once it actually gets working. You can kind of see it's gone for like a slightly weird um, thing around the side here, but if we can actually get some gameplay showing you this thing working, that would be ideal. Looks like we're going to have to go through the, the start and everything. But um, it does work absolutely brilliantly. Um, and then from here, you can press start and select together, and then you can go back onto um, the menu. Oopsie. Uh, Game Boy Color. Okay, there we go, we can have a look at John's uh, Zelda DX. Thank you to uh, John for actually helping me put these uh, ROMs on here because he's a bit more clued up on software than I am. Um, and this is a custom uh, kind of skin that he's flashed on. Um, so the thing is with aspect ratios and stuff, this thing doesn't seem to um, really like automatically scale things to the right size. I'm sure it's probably something you can do. It doesn't look terrible. Um, in fact, the Game Boy games are probably one of the best looking things on this device. Um, I'm going to struggle to get um, an accurate color representation onto the um, onto the camera, but it doesn't look as washed out as it does um, on the sc in, on the screen in person. Um, but I mean, games like this just work gorgeously. There isn't a single bit of lag. Um, we'll have a look in a minute if there's any sort of um, frame rate, like screen tearing when we move frames. But it doesn't. I don't remember there being any. Um, so when you actually get the games on and once you turn on and there's no software um, glitches, this thing is just, as I said, incredible. Super loudspeaker, which sounds great. You know, let's go out here and have a look. 
So there you go, no, almost no screen tearing, a little bit, but that's mainly because this screen isn't um, super high quality, but nowhere near as much as like the Odroid Go before the update. So now you can just play a super viable game of um, Link's Awakening on a really nice D-pad and uh, A and B buttons, and you've also got your buttons on the back for like PlayStation 1 and stuff. So hopefully this has given you some sort of an insight into uh, what the Retro Stone is capable of. Um, I struggled personally to get this thing to be working to its full uh, potential, mainly because I'm just not as clued up on um, Pi software um, as probably a lot of you guys are. Um, I don't believe this is going to be very expensive. In fact, if I remember correctly, it's around about the $100 mark, which means this thing is going to be half the price of a lot of the custom Pi builds that you can get. And it's in a really, really nice, proper... Um, manufactured shell, not like one that's been like cut out with a Dremel or something. Even though you know those are great, this is just better. Um, obviously, it has um, a lot more. Um, it can do a lot more than a custom one because this thing has been uh, really crammed in with custom boards and PCBs that have uh, fully utilised a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm really, really uh, happy with it once I get playing, but I just can't quite get all the software to um, to fully work. Uh, that being said. That doesn't mean that you guys aren't going to be able to do that. Um, I would recommend watching ETA Prime's video on this thing. Um, he goes into a bit more detail. He's also quite a lot bit more clued up on um, kind of Raspberry Pis and Linux-based softwares and stuff. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video nonetheless. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below um, and I will try and answer as many of them as I can. Um, if you have any suggestions, if there's anything you'd like to see specifically, then uh, maybe I can do another video again in the future once I've um, learned how to use this thing a bit more. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I need to try and like not be biased when doing these things. Um, obviously, I wasn't paid to make this video. Uh, this was just sent to me for free. Um, it's a great product. I would tell you if it wasn't, um, but as I have mentioned, software-wise, it's just not like a, a retro mini uh, where you buy it, the games come preloaded, you turn it on, the second you turn it on, it's ready to go. This thing needs a bit of work done to it. Um, when you get it as well, the SD card doesn't come with anything on it, so you've got a flush from the software and everything like that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.